Wagyu prices got you down. Let's see if we can make a choice brisket. Super tasty. Today in the Cook Newfoundlander. Welcome back everybody uh, to yet a, another video. Uh, today we're going to be cooking a choice brisket, uh, which is normally not as fatty, not as tasty. You know, you don't get that uh, supreme intramuscular fat. But today we're going to be using an injection. This is the Holy Cow Beef Injection by uh, Meat Church. I've used this one, not, one time before and it was really good. So today we're going to try that out. And uh, we're going to try to make this brisket really tasty. And now last time we done a Wagyu brisket which was mind-blowing with flavor and uh, juiciness. Oh, it was just so good. So today we're going to try to make this choice brisket super tasty. Let's have a look at it. All right, so this is what we're dealing with today. As you can see, there's a lot of fat and silver skin and even some little flaky parts here on the bottom. So we're going to be trimming this up and we're going to be using our injector. And we're going to inject this brisket and see how it turns out. Now I'm not going to shoot the trimming portion. I've already trimmed a brisket uh, on a video before and if you want to check that out, you certainly can. It's in my brisket video up here or you know, over here wherever it's going to be and I'll also put it in the description below. All right, I'll see you back after it's trimmed up. All right, now that we get the brisket trimmed up, uh, trimmed off most of the silver skin and took a big large chunks of fat from here and there, I'm gonna go ahead and inject this brisket. Now there's a big debate, of course, on whether or not you wanna inject with the grain or against the grain. I'm gonna go with the grain, so the grain of me is now running this way. And uh, we're gonna inject probably about every half inch or so, and we're gonna plump this brisket right up. And this should add lots of flavor. Whoops. As you can see, it's kind of squirts out all over the place, which is, is absolutely fine. Now I'm using the heavier gauge needle on this injector. I guess you could use a, a smaller one if you really wanted to, but I find uh, when you're doing meat, that the heavier gauge works much better. Now I heated up this injection just over the stove just for a moment. I didn't boil it or anything else like that. I just kind of heated the water just slightly and made the injection. Um, whether you're supposed to do that or not, I have no idea, but you know, there it is. It's being done. I'm not going to use any binder on this injection today, or on this uh, brisket. When I go to apply my Texas style rub, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this injection, as you can see, that's coming out over the brisket. I'm just gonna take that and I'm just gonna rub it out over the surface and I think that will do just fine. As you can tell, this brisket can take a whole lot of injection. I just made one serving of it, which is one cup of water to every third cup of uh, powder or or the injection itself. And um, I I done this on one brisket before, and it came out really well. But I, I didn't shoot that video; that was before my YouTube channel. So I figured I'd give you a look to see and see how it comes out. I'm going to be doing a Texas style rub. I think I should make it a little tiny bit more. Now this is a 14 pound brisket. It's actually quite large. I probably could have uh, used just a little bit more here, but that's okay. All right, so that's our brisket. I'm just going to go ahead and rub this out over the sides. And this will become our bonder for our spice. All right, so let's go uh, heat up the smoke North Huron, uh, my offset, and we'll get this on the pit. Brisket here in the back. With the point facing towards the fire. And throw on a few spare ribs, these spare ribs, at our water pan. Fire is going. Let's go ahead and close down the smoke North Huron. Catch you back later.
All right, so it is now our number six. What I've done is I took the brisket and I flipped it. So now it's fat side down. The bark has been set on the top. Now is sitting at about 140 after six hours. And close this up. Still rocking the pit between uh, 250 and 275. And we're going to start to spritz now pretty soon uh, once we get all that moisture. Sorry, on the bottom dried up. Back at you later. All right, we're eight hours into this cook. Let's have a look and see what's going on in here. Look at that in the back. Mm. Just check the temps. We got uh, 160, 155, and in the back here we're sitting at uh, 163. I'm going to push past the stall and then we'll see how it goes. Catch you back. All right, the time currently is 9 p.m. This will be our number 10 for this brisket. Just got some butcher paper slathered in some smoked tallow, beef tallow, wagyu beef tallow, actually. And I'm just going to pour some over the top here, wrap it up, throw it in the oven. Look at that bark, man. Is something else and uh, we'll come back for a taste test well after many hours of cooking and resting and everything else what I done is I wrapped it up in butcher paper I put it in my oven at 300 degrees until it reached an internal temperature of about uh, 205 I started checking for tenderness and I reached the desired tenderness at 207 for whatever I wanted and it was really late last night when that happened so what I done is then I put my oven down to 170 and kind of let it go all night so this would be the overnight rest as they call it and I've done that one time before and it turned out pretty well so let's see how it looks A lot of juices running there. That's okay. My wife won't be too happy about it. That's <laughs> marriage, right? Oh, looks really good. Looks like the paper done a really good job of absorbing. Yeah, it looks looks and feels good. out normally I wouldn't throw this out but uh, I don't need it so let's go ahead and get rid of that paper so this is our brisket mm. this is the non fatty end and then we have the fatty end in the bottom let's go ahead and slice this down the middle see what we're dealing with shall we Okay, looks pretty good. Yeah, looks quite juicy. I think the flat on this is probably going to be a little bit dry, but um, that usually happens with the overnight rest. So I'm okay with that. So let's take some slices. And see what we're dealing with here. And tell that some of these ends here may be a little bit crisp. I don't know if you can hear that juice running out there. It's quite juicy. Let's see here. Oh, we got take this from the middle here. Tail, nice beautiful smoke ring on there. It uh, pulls apart quite nicely. Fat is nice and renders nice and squishy, which is really good. The juice looks pretty good in it. I don't know if it's overly dry. Let's uh, give it a taste test. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. Not dry. Super flavorful with that beef injection. Wow. Mm. Let's go ahead and try fatty. Well, first one I'm going to do, actually, no, I was going to separate the flat hair. I think I'm going to leave it on. And I'm going to cut this down the middle. Check that out. Look at that. Really nice. And uh, let's go ahead and take a slice off of this. The point on this brisket was quite large. Much larger than I'm used to. Usually the point is kind of small. You can tell it's super tender. Mm hmm. Cheers. Let's try it out. Mmm. That fatty end? Wow. So good. Wow. So yeah, you can actually make a standard brisket, standard double A or um, a choice brisket, super flavorful. It's not going to have quite the amount of tenderness or juiciness that a Wagyu has or maybe, you know, a prime, triple A, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, in the end, it's really about the taste, and the taste is way up there. So I hope all you folks can follow along and duplicate this for your friends and family at home. Until then, get cooking.